What's going on YouTube and welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications so you are notified every single time I drop a video and you don't miss not one video. Everybody in here, smash that like button, share this video and drop a comment down below during the video, after the video, before the video, whatever you feel. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you like about the video. Let me know what you want to see next. You saw by the title and the thumbnail, we got a good one. So let's get straight into this room and make sure you guys are watching those ads straight through I know some of them can be a little bit lengthy but watch them as much as you can as best you can it helps support this channel it helps support me it helps me to push out more content it gives me motivation it helps me to do this on a more full-time basis in the future but let's get back to the video so I can start going over everything and I can explain why I was not able to finish this big boy Asher. Okay, everybody, this is Asher. He is a purebred St. Bernard and he is huge. When I saw him get out the car, I was like, oh my goodness, that dog is big. And not even big where he's overweight, he is tall. He is a gigantic St. Bernard. And I see St. Bernards all the time, but man, was this one big. <laughs> he was a big boy. Very sweet. Very, very, very sweet. He's a good boy. And he did struggle with his nails a bit, which later on in the video, I'm not going to give the spoiler away, but later on in the video, you will see why I struggle with this one particular foot right here. But as you can see, I switched up the angle for y'all again. I think I want to do an angle like this once a week so y'all can have this. I'm going to switch it up throughout the days that I upload as you can see my days for uploading is Monday Wednesday Friday those are the days that I feel like I can get them out the easiest and get y'all some content I know I was slacking in the past but I'm trying to get back to it I'm getting back to it the reason why I'm switching up the angle is because not everybody enjoys this angle I can kind of see why just editing it alone can be a little bit hard on my eyes. So watching it on a YouTube video, I get completely if some people don't like the angle. So I'm going to be doing all different types of angles just for everybody who likes to watch the videos and prefer different angles. So to start him off, I decided to do his paw pads and his nails. I wanted to do his paw pads first specifically because he's such a big boy and the tub that I was going to get him in is a hard metal tub. So with the fur under his foot and the tub being so slippery because of the water, I didn't want him to fall while I needed him to stand up and hurt one of his legs or hurt himself or anything and yes we do have a mat in the tub to help with that but a lot of the dogs move the mat around where it doesn't even matter if the mat is there or not Now, as some of you guys may know, I do have a back injury, so I do have to take breaks in between doing his paw pads because he struggles so much with this particular paw pad. I did have to take breaks in between because my back was on fire. And I couldn't put too much of his body weight on me like I usually do because I didn't want anything to slip and then I herniate a disc again. So I was trying to do what was safest for me and him.
now for me mentally i'm trying to push through this dog but it's a struggle because he's so big and i haven't done a dog this big in a very long time since prior to my back injury and it's honestly been enough time between when i hurt my back so now where i should be able to handle a dog like this to this magnitude per the doctor but for some reason i still can't so i have to pace myself when i'm doing dogs this big but after this one i realized i probably can't do these anymore so this might be the last really really big dog you see on my channel you may see one more maybe a few more if the dog is really good and i can handle it but for the most part you may not see really really big dogs like this on my channel And watching this video back, I'm realizing how much pain I was in because my hand is shaking a little bit. That's how much pain my back was in. And and uh, full disclosure, it wasn't just the herniated disc that was hurting. It was just being in that position for such a long time, which was causing my back to burn. And this video is actually from, I believe, my second week there. So she didn't know certain dogs, certain big dogs I couldn't do. So it was new to her. It was new to me. It was new to everybody. But it was a learning experience for the both of us. <laughs>
my shock and almost disbelief to him not having dew claws or multiple dew claws is because St. Bernard's and Great Pyrenees and Newfoundlands always have double dew claws. Always. So for him to just have one and I was just I was very, very, very surprised. Very surprised. Which speaking of dew claws, if your dog does not climb or hike or utilize the dew claws, just have them removed because they do not need them they get caught on so many things i cannot tell you how many dogs have come in and the owners have said yeah he got his dew claw caught so he may have some irritation there and if he snaps at you that's why just get the dew claws taken off they don't need them i promise you they don't need them unless they're utilizing them and nine times out of ten your dog doesn't utilize them notice this foot this is his front left foot he is giving me little to no problems with this foot just pay attention
and as you can see his nails are bigger than my actual Dremel so I am taking time t pacing myself because again my back is still hurting but I'm trying to do the best job that I can because one thing I'm not going to do is do a half job on my dogs no matter how much pain I am in I'm going to make sure my dogs look like I was never in pain
Now, full disclaimer, I love St. Bernard's. They're so sweet. They're like big old teddy bears. But I would never have one because of all of that hair. Oh, gosh. Charlie, my Cavalier sheds, and I just, I can't deal with that. I cannot imagine having that much hair in my house. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Now, the reason why I blow him out before I wet him is because, one, it loosens up a lot of that undercoat that's in his fur, and two, it also loosens up a lot of the dirt that is in his fur. So, it's going through and it's just cleaning all of it out. So. I love a good blowout and it's satisfying to see just all of those tufts of hair just flying out coming out and then the end result like the final product of the groom and they look beautiful I love it but I think blowing them out is better than just washing them right off the bat. So wetting the hair makes for a much easier cleanup because you're not fighting with fluffy staticky hair just sticking to your hands. When you mildly wet the hair or even when you soak the hair, 
it makes it so you can just scoop it all together and toss it out. One thing about a lot of groomers, because the majority of us are girls, and it could be the guys too, I'm not really sure, because I've really only worked with a bunch of girls, maybe like one or two, or maybe a handful of guys I've worked with. But when you're blowing a dog's coat like this, there is a lot of hair flying everywhere. And it often gets in your eyes, your mouth, your nose, and your ears. I know I don't speak for myself when I say this, but I cannot stand it when it's just sticking to my face, when it's on my tongue, when it goes up my nose. <laughs> it is so hard to deal with it. But that's why I stop and clean myself off before I finish. Now, as you can see right here, he's struggling a little bit and I could not figure out what was going on with him. And then shortly you'll see that I figured out what was going on. Now usually when I say Asher up, he gets right on up, he hops right on up, he can do it, he's good, but I couldn't figure out, he couldn't figure out what was going on, I couldn't figure out what was going on, I did not know what was happening at the moment, I just knew he wouldn't get up, and he was a big dog and I could not pick him up. So I was trying to work with him and figure out, okay, how can I wet the other side of him without him struggling? Now, as you can see, he's set back down. Now, when Asher first came in this morning, my boss told me he's a really good dog. He literally, all he does is pants while he's there because he he's not a fan of the grooming process, but he'll let it happen. But typically when you tell him up, he gets up. You tell him to sit, he sits. When you need to do his nails, he's good. So I couldn't understand why I was struggling. And Asher had been there several times prior to me even doing him he'd been there several times so the way I was struggling and the way he was struggling I'm like what is going on like I know they're not going to just say he's a good dog just to give him to me and he's not a good dog I could tell because you can read people's energy so I couldn't figure out what was wrong and I know he could not tell me what was wrong
and right here is when I noticed something was wrong with his foot he couldn't figure out how to place it down without it being in pain and I was like I don't know what is going on with his foot what is happening so immediately I called my boss and she called the owner to figure out okay what's going on and that is why he could not stand up now me watching this video back I could see him twisting his foot but when you are in that moment there's things that you cannot see so after I saw it I immediately stopped washing him and I let my boss know so she went to go call the owner just to kind of figure out what was going on and right here you can kind of see his bone structure is just mildly swollen just mildly swollen which I, again I could not notice that right in the moment because you are so hyper focused on other things like okay well let me just help him out and when I was telling him to get up you know right in the beginning he would get right on up no issues no problems but then I'm noticing okay he's not getting up when I ask him to get up and even here I say okay well let me see you know now that your leg is straight now can you get up even just to get up enough to get out of the tub and he could not get up so after speaking with the owner the owner did explain to my boss that hey he stumbled getting into the van this morning and he hurt his front left paw so that's why he might be having an issue with that but they wanted us to continue the groom but given the title of this video you know I did not continue with the groom I tried to see how much more I can get done because he was already wet but after him struggling and really having a hard time I realized I cannot get the rest of this groom done with him not being in pain so I had to pull the stop the services very shortly now again like I said in the moment you can't think of what is going on but it does make sense that he was giving me issues for his right paw because he couldn't put weight on his left paw so when I lifted up his left paw to do his paw pads and his nails he gave me very minimal issues with that paw because I was taking the pressure off of that foot now he did struggle a little bit because I was still holding that foot but I took the pressure off of that foot now anytime I lifted up one of his other feet he would have to put more pressure on it and that makes sense as to why he could not do it as opposed to how he usually is because he was in pain
Now in this moment, I am testing to see how much he can handle. Can you handle standing up for me to finish your wash? Let me see, can I put some warm water on you to kind of help calm you, put more, I'm just trying to see where this bath is going. Just testing it out, just trying to understand, okay, are you really in a lot of pain? Because at this moment, I'm trying to figure out in my head, do I call the groom? Do I stop the services? Because you don't want him to get more hurt than he already is. You don't want him to put so much pressure on his paw that something breaks or anything happens. So in my mind right now, I'm just trying to understand, okay, what do I do now? Do I call the groom? Do I stop the groom? Do I continue the groom? Do I see what he can get through? I'm, I'm debating everything in my head because and I think I speak for all groomers when I say this when you are calling a service like just canceling it right in the middle of the service it's really hard to make that decision because one you don't want to upset the pet parent you don't you absolutely don't and yes it is 100% about the dog but at the same time you don't want to upset the pet parent as well so in my head I'm going through all of these scenarios okay if I stop the services are they gonna be okay with that and for me I was trained to care about the dog before you care about what the owner thinks so ultimately I canceled the service because I could tell he was not uncomfortable he was not comfortable so and I think I did make the best decision for him and I'm glad I didn't go through with it after they took him to the vet because they did take him to the vet immediately afterwards the vet actually told him that he has severe arthritis and that is why he's in so much pain so they put him on medication and they're just trying to see how he is now this was a few months ago I don't know how he is now because I have not seen him since but he could have been there since I'm not there every day because I work one Saturday out of the month and I'm off one day during the week and they work Monday through Friday so he could have come when I wasn't there but to my knowledge I know they put him on medicine just to kind of help him out and they were gonna reschedule his appointment so I don't know so right here is where we are calling the appointment we're gonna send him home because it's too much like it's way too much on him and you can see for yourself he gave me his paw he wanted me to hold his paw because it was too much for him so we're calling the groom and we're sending him home now for groomers or pet parents that wonder why their dog got sent home for a quote-unquote sprained ankle or why the groomer is so concerned about something if you're not concerned about it our number one priority is the pet we have to make sure that the dog is okay the dog does not go home worse than it came in or anything like that just understand that sending a dog home is the hardest decision a groomer has to make because you don't know what to do in that instance you're not a doctor you're not a vet it's just a hard decision it's a hard responsibility to have to have so making that decision just know that was the absolute last resort when somebody makes a decision to send your dog home because we want to do what we can to help the dog but if helping the dog means making it worse we're not going to do it we're going to send them home 100 percent every single time you also have to understand that it's a loss for us too. Groomers, 99% of the time are on commission. If not 100% of the time, they're on a commission base. So when we're sending a dog home, we're losing money, but we're putting the pet before that money because we don't want the dog to be injured any further than they already are.
all right guys we are going to wrap up this video i am sorry it wasn't the full groom but i did want to show you guys what actually happens in the grooming salon so you don't think that we are forcing dogs through anything that they are not comfortable with so i did want to show you some of the backside to it and just kind of help y'all understand why we send dogs home make sure you guys smash that like button share this video drop a comment down below do all that fancy youtube stuff i love you guys train your dogs for grooming make sure you watch every video straight through watch those ads enjoy the videos i'll catch you in the next one love you guys